I will bless the Lord at all times. I will bless the Lord. That, that sounds better. At all times. His praise shall continually be in my mouth. Kind Jesus, we come to you right now in Jesus' name, Lord. Lord, I decrease, oh God, that you may increase, God. Lord God, that it may be none of me at all of you. Lord Jesus, I humble myself under your mighty throne. And I step completely out of the way, God. Holy Ghost, have your way. Holy Ghost, speak what thus saith the Lord. In Jesus' name, amen. I want you to look at your neighbor politely. And say, neighbor. Neighbor. Praising God. Praising God. For deliverance. For deliverance. One more time. Say, praising God. Praising God. For deliverance. For deliverance. Let's talk. God promises great blessings to his people. But many of these blessings require active participation. The Lord will deliver us from fear. Save us out of our troubles. The Lord will guard and deliver us when we talk to him. The Lord will redeem us, but we must do our part as well. And we can catch this revelation. We can actually, I feel a teaching anointing right now. We can actually appropriate his blessings when we seek him. I'm going to say that again. We can actually appropriate his blessings when we seek him, cry out to him, trust him, fear him, walk in truth, turn from evil, do good, serve him, seek peace, become humble, and lastly serve him. And the Holy Ghost told me to talk about fear for a moment. The Holy Ghost told me to talk about fear for a moment. The word fear means anxious anticipation of danger. Teach, Bishop. I feel a teaching anointing. Can I just talk to y'all? Talk, Bishop. The word fear means anxious anticipation of danger. Pain. Be afraid. Which means frightened or regretful. Yes. And regretful means sorry for a mistake. Yes. And let me expose the enemy. The enemy has a way of keeping people bound in fear. Yes. The enemy has a way of keeping people bound yes, in does. fear. And you will never get to your destiny walking in fear that causes you to be anxious of danger. I'm going to say that again. You will never get to your destiny walking in fear that causes you to be anxious of danger. Come on, Bishop. And so now, God now is trying, I'm going to preach in a minute, y'all, but I want to teach for a second. God is trying to get you to a place of living a life of peace. Please take notes. Please take notes. As I was in prayer and seeking God, I want to be there. I asked the Lord, how can the people of God get rid of fear and anxious anticipation of danger in their lives? I'm going to say that again. I asked the Lord, how can the people of God get rid of fear and anxious anticipation of danger in their lives. Come on, Bishop. And God spoke to me and said, when your life becomes a pattern of obedience to the will of God for your life, it will kill the fear in your life. This is in the text, y'all. This is in the text. I'm going to prove it. 
And so now, God literally promises to take care of those who walk in obedience. And when your life becomes a pattern of, diso of disobedience, you always give room for the enemy to cripple your life with fear because you know you are outside the will of God for your life. And there are so many believers who have been crippled with living a life of fear. Next point. People who walk in fear are still bound to their past. People who walk in fear are still bound to their past. I'm helping somebody. People who walk in fear are still bound to their past. I'm going to say that about three more times. People who walk in fear are still bound to their past. People who walk in fear are still bound to their past. I'm going to say that until something break off of you. People who walk in fear are still bound to their past. Because your fear is connected to your past. People who walk in fear are still bound to their past. People who walk in fear are still subject to to their past. And so now, people of God, you cannot be a prisoner of your past. You can't change the mistakes you made. You can't reverse what love was done to you. You can't even reverse what you even done to yourself. And many of you now are still a prisoner of your past. And what the enemy has done is cause what God has for you in the future to be on delay simply because you have become a friend to your past. You cannot change your past. You cannot change what folk have done to you. You cannot change what you've done to others. But if you are ever going to experience who Jesus is, you must stop being a prisoner of your past. And many of you are still carrying the weight and guilt of your past. And it is like a cancer is eating at you. And what God is trying to do is God is trying to speak to you. God is trying to get you to focus on Him. God is trying to bless you. God is trying to place you in the plan and purpose God has for you. But you are still a prisoner of all the hurt people caused you in the past. And God told me to tell you that it's time to erase your past. The Bible says, let me get back up scripture so you can't get mad at the bishop. The Bible says that all things have passed away. And behold, all things have become new, Pastor Campbell, that's right. The Bible says in Timothy that God has not given you the spirit of fear, but a power and a love, you're about to make me preach now, and of a sound mind, God, you're about to make me preach, baby. It's time to, for you to embrace yourself. In your relationship with Jesus Christ. Let the old be the old. Let the old you be the old you. And embrace your relationship with Jesus Christ. You may be in a place where you have questions. Where you may be at your lowest in life right now. But Jesus is a cure to all your problems. And God now is trying to get you to a place of deliverance. And this now brings us to the parable scripture text. This is a psalm of David. And David is praising God for deliverance. Yes, he is. And God uses an omnipotent and powerful life lessons of life to get David delivered. David 
David was an adulterer. David was a murderer. David committed great sin. But because of David being chosen and David being a man after God's own heart, God used the mistakes David made to get David delivered. Lord have mercy. God used the David's mistakes to get David. Y'all just y'all not hear what I'm saying? I said God used David's mistake to get David delivered. God used the needle that was in your arm to get you delivered. God used you sleeping with Tom, Dick, and Harry, starting this, starting that, saying this, saying that, to get you delivered. God used your mess to get you delivered. And the Holy Ghost revealed to me that David praised God before he actually got delivered. Right. right. David praised God before he actually got delivered. And if you are going through anything in your life, if you are going through hell in your life right now, I dare you to open up your mouth and begin to praise God before you get delivered. Lord have mercy, I feel like preaching. I feel a preach, y'all. When praises go up, I tell you right now to send up praises while I'm preaching. I tell you to send up praises while I'm preaching. You better praise them. Your life depends on it. You better praise them. Somebody came in here heavy today. Somebody turned them on Sata. Somebody came in here heavy today. I'm going to go ahead and preach now. Ain't going to finish this sermon. I'm going to go ahead and preach. If you want deliverance, you better throw up a praise. If you want to be healed, you better praise. If you want to be blessed, you better praise. You can sit there and look cute if you want. But I'm like the blind man in the New Testament when he heard Jesus' voice. The blind man shouted even the louder because of this blind man's praise. His sight was restored by Jesus. If you want to be delivered, if you want to be blessed, you better praise Jesus because of praise go up blessings come back down and many of you are in a season where you can't feel God you can't hear God and you in a season of grief you in a season of pain you in a season of sickness you in a season of depression you in a season of low self esteem you in a season of persecution you in a season of rejection you in a season of heartbreak but if you can just grab a hold of God in the midst of your pain then your breakthrough is right around the corner this is a song about praising God for deliverance and David was in a strange place when he wrote this song and some of y'all right now you in a season of a strange place you don't understand why your emotions is all out of whack you don't understand why you so depressed you don't understand why this had to happen to me you got questions why the hell am I having a 
feel like preaching. Uh, why am I having to go through this? Uh, this is uh, a psalm of David uh, when he changed uh, his behavior uh, before Abimelech uh, who drove him away uh, and he departed. Uh, Abimelech uh, was trying uh, to kill David. Uh, Uh, if more new 
wine uh, was poured into it. Uh, new wine, uh, therefore, uh, was always uh, put into uh, new wine skins. Uh, I feel like a Baptist preacher. Uh, the word new uh, is a Greek. Uh, it actually means uh, it means fresh. Uh, it means young. Uh, and wine uh, in the Greek language uh, is a fermented juice uh, that has actually uh, been agitated. Uh, look at your neighbor uh, and say, neighbor, uh, there is nothing uh, wrong uh, with being agitated. Uh, sometimes uh, God has got to teach you some stuff. Uh, sometimes uh, God has got to allow you uh, to go through hell uh, and mess up your life uh, and create uh, problems in your life uh, to get you uh, to your place uh, of destiny. Uh, and what Jesus uh, was saying uh, in this verse uh, is Jesus uh, used this subscription uh, to tell us uh, that he had not come uh, to patch up uh, old religious system uh, of Judaism uh, with its rules uh, and traditions. Uh, Jesus' purpose uh, in this verse uh, was to bring in uh, something new. Uh, though it had been prophesied uh, for centuries, uh, and this new message, uh, the gospel uh, of Jesus Christ, uh, and God uh, told me uh, to tell you uh, that the gospel uh, is still new. Uh, because every generation uh, must hear the gospel. Uh, and God uh, told me uh, to tell you, uh, when you follow Christ, uh, you must uh, be prepared uh, for new ways uh, to live uh, and new ways uh, to look at people uh, and new ways uh, to serve him. Uh, in verse 1 uh, of this song, uh, uh, look at your neighbor uh, with a prophetic eye uh, and the neighbor uh, uh, will bless the Lord uh, at all times. Uh, his praise uh, shall continually uh, be in my mouth. Uh, I feel like preaching now. Uh, good God Almighty. Uh, Teresa, uh, I feel the preach. Uh, I feel the anointing. Uh, I'm about to preach uh, like I'm crazy. Uh, the revelation uh, and illumination uh, of this verse. Uh, let me teach for a second. Uh, it's I will bless uh, in the Hebrew language. Uh, it actually means uh, Barak, uh, which means uh, to bless uh, or make holy uh, as an act uh, of adoration, uh, which means to worship uh, or to love greatly. Uh, the Lord uh, is translated uh, as Jehovah, uh, which means uh, the self-existent uh, or eternal uh, in which the Jewish national uh, name of God uh, is Jehovah uh, the Lord uh, times uh, in Hebrew uh, it means now uh, praise uh, in Hebrew uh, is Tahila uh, Tahila uh, which means uh, laudation uh, praise uh, combination uh, which means uh, a special praise uh, which means uh, express uh, one uh, a 
approval uh, or adoration uh, continually uh, continually uh, in Hebrew is uh, tamid uh, which means uh, sacrifice uh, perpetual uh, or lasting forever uh, mouth is uh, it means to talk uh, or to speak uh, in order uh, to give information uh, or express ideas uh, or feelings. Uh, so as I close uh, the revelation uh, to this verse uh, is David uh, is blessing God uh, as an act uh, of adoration. Uh, David uh, is telling uh, the Lord uh, and he is loving the Lord greatly. This is actually the self-existing God, the true eternal God. This is Jehovah, the Lord. This is the Lord who always did and who always will be. This is the God who is the creator of creation. This is the self-existing God of the cosmos, the universe who made something out of nothing. This is the eternal and self-existing God who has no limits, who has no age, who is not subject to time and space, but who created time and space and who has the ability to step in to time and space and interact with us because he is the sustainer of life. It is he alone who gives life and who has control of life. This is the Lord is greatly loving. This is the Lord that David is greatly loving now because of what Jesus did on the cross. We can bless Jesus at all times. We can greatly love Jesus right now. Is there anybody in this house that loves Jesus? Slap your neighbor and say, neighbor, now is the time the great I feel it. I feel like preaching. Now is the time to open up your mouth and say, my God, in this place. Hallelujah. Teaching moment. As I go, as I move expeditiously, because the great man of God, Minister Kelly, got to come minister. So I'm, I'm going to close. Teaching. Catch this. David now, in this verse, in verse 1, is blessing the Lord and loving the Lord greatly Amen. in the midst of a heavy trial right. in his life. Right. David now, he's running from Abimelech. And it is because of David's past life that has him in this situation. And now David now, in the midst of running for his life, has a revelation saying, I'm running for my life. 
I'm running to spare my life. So in the midst of my running, in the midst of David running, David has a revelation while being on the run. Right. Have, have anybody ever been in trouble? Have anybody ever been so contaminated by your past? And even in the midst of you being stuck in your past, you get a revelation right. from God? Why you stuck in your past? Amen. David has a revelation. Come on. That the only thing that can save my life, watch this, is if I open up my mouth and say in verse 1, Psalm 34, I will bless the Lord at all times. And his praise shall continually be in my mouth. David realizes that it is his watch this David realizes that it is his blessing the Lord that depends on his life David realizes that it is his blessing the Lord and praising the Lord that can only get him out of trouble and David is in a position he ain't got nothing He's not sitting on the throne. He's running. He's running but all he has is his praise. Right. Lord have mercy. Oh, my God Almighty. The Holy Ghost told me to tell you that if you want to come out of your struggle and find peace and joy, watch this, then you better get a perpetual. Yes. Look at your name and say perpetual. perpetual. You better get a not just a praise. Anybody can praise. I'm talking about perpetuality. Right. Perpetualize this thing, y'all. Right. Perpetual praise. Over and over. Which is the praise that is going to last forever. Amen. On and on and on. Because a perpetual praise will bring you out of the pit of hell. A perpetual praise will deliver you from your enemies. A perpetual praise We'll bring you out of suicide. Yes. You mean to tell me I can have a perpetual praise while being in the pit of hell? Yes, you can. Your perpetual praise will keep you from the hand of the enemy. Your perpetual praise will keep you even in the midst of grief. And as I close and take my seat, some may say, well, it don't take all that praise and with my mouth. Mm -hmm. Some may yeah, say. Yes, I can just sit cute. Uh -huh. With my legs crossed. And just say it in my heart. I got news for you. You need a mouth. It don't work like in that. order to praise. You gotta, it's, it's, ooh, praise can't exist. Without a mouth. That's right. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's right. Only the mouth. Can expose. And reveal praise. Right. So for you to say I can praise in my heart and my mind and not use my mouth is a lie from the pit of hell as I take well, my seat. If it's in your heart, it's going to come Because this verse, if it's in your heart, it's going to come out. Because this verse, my wife is with me in the spirit. Because this verse says, his praise shall continually be in my mouth. Right. And that word mouth in the Hebrew means to talk, which means to speak. In order to give information to express ideas or feelings to God. And the Bible says, make a joyful noise unto the Lord. Y'all better be praising him because I'm done. Shout unto the Lord with the voice of triumph. So praise. So praise is only valid and true with the mouth.